Hello, 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 how are we? Welcome back to another episode of Do You Want Summit's Lovely. Today we don't have Jake because we actually had a huge fight. <laughs> I'm only messing. <laughs> As we said before, he actually has work, so we had technical difficulties and we couldn't get the mic going, but look, we're back in action. And for the day that's in it on Sunday, we have a very, very special guest, technically the creator of Do You Want Summit's Lovely, my mom. Hi everybody, how's everyone doing? <laughs> Here is the woman that made it all, Julie. He pushed me onto it. Yeah. <laughs> You're weak, Gwen. <laughs> um so let's go ahead and get started. I said since I had like eighteen jobs throughout my lifetime, um we say we said we'll have a bit of work stories and then we'll have stories from my mum as well. So let's get the ball rolling by starting from Costa, Costa, how good was Costa, ma'am? Brilliant. I loved working in Costa. Yeah. It's literally a stone throw away from my house. Um, but by God, the terms, like the kids that used to come in here. I got him the job, by the way. Yeah, it was Kelly. <laughs> it's me. It was Kelly. <laughs> All right, go on. <laughs> <laughs> but the kids that used to come in absolutely terrorised us. Um, one day I was in with. Tina, an old colleague of mine. Hi, Tina, if you're listening. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, we were in one day and these kids that normally would come up and pester our lives <laughs> came in and was started giving me cheek and then I had to go around the corner and be like, go on, get out, get out, get out, get out. Your man egged me. Oh my God, you should have seen how pink I went. I literally, he flung the egg. I looked at him as he flung it. I just went up, caught the egg, it smashed in my hand and another three eggs landed in the fridge behind us. (laughs) (laughs) Me and Tina were like crazy people rubbing off egg yolk from the fridge. It was the worst thing ever. Um, And then we have another set of kids that used to come into the disabled toilet and regularly smoke butts of fags they used to smoke Joke. yeah used to find butts of fags i used to do that what <laughs> down, in black my pool. House did. down in blackpool you're joking mm, we used to do that and um, we used to find it's disgusting i know like but sure it is what it is we used to find butts of fags and we used to put them into a skin for sure what age are you smoking since oh since sure what what age in sixth class me and Ryan O'Sullivan found a box of fags. You're joking me, never knew that. Never knew that. Yeah, sure, you, there's a lot of things you don't know about me. I suppose, I suppose. And it's, it's the fairly same with you. Yeah, well, I suppose. Yeah, because we know you're a bit mad. <laughs> well, past tense, past tense. <laughs> like, and speaking of smoking, before, remember I worked in CWS? Yeah. The yeah, factory? Yeah. So basically, CWS was like a laundrette. It was like a modern day Madeline sisters. I'm not even messing. Mm, mm. I actually left the place with a limp. Um, but it was very fun working down there, don't get me wrong, I'm not slanderizing the company. <laughs> <laughs> but it is what it is, like it was a laundrette. You know? So basically how it worked was, you would stand at a position, I used to have these long, like, so there's a towel machine, tea towel machine, whatever, and mm. the laundrette, it would send to hotels, so like bed sheets and tea towels and what have you. So we used to be on, I was on every machine, um, and we were very fond of smoking weed. <laughs> <laughs> Robert, I don't think I need to hear these things out with all that little puppy. Little puppy, yeah, I'm, little twi- puppy. I'm 24 yeah, next yeah, month. Yeah, all right, go on, go on. <laughs> Some things mammy don't need to hear. <laughs> but as I said, we were fond of it. Like, it was so much fun. You know, there was actually five of us working down there. Me, Ryan O'Sullivan, my other friend Ryan Burke, Leona, um, shout out to all of you as well, actually. Um, Sarah Devro, another one. Mm-hmm. Uh, who else was it? Anyway, there was all of us down there. Mm-hmm. And we used to smoke on our break and our shift used to be from one no, i think it was three o'clock in the day until 12 at night and by god was the sun splitting the stones mm. we used to be in this factory mm. sweating <laughs> uh, and there's like marks so like let's just say a big huge heavy quilt you have to get 250 of them in an hour the tea towels you have to get 500 in an hour so you operate the front of the machine it goes through it presses it mm, folds it and mm. it comes out the back of the machine and then those people will pack it away and by the way he's fantastic at doing the washing since <laughs> <laughs> that's a spoof <laughs> but um we had a smoke one day and oh my god i got mangled we were, i went down the tea towel machine i was delighted to go down the tea towel machine because you're not whipping a big huge heavy wet duvet into clips so it's going mad anyway trying to get my target and your man came around from the back and was like 
what the fuck is wrong with you? I was like, what you mean? He goes, you're sending them in all backwards. He goes, you do this again and I'll get the head, mo- head one down here. Came down anyway, did it again and again and again. I got put onto the towel machine, was doing the exact same thing. And then I got put onto the the quilt machine, was doing the exact same thing. <laughs> and then a couple of days later, me and my friend were like, why are we in this? Joe, so like, fuck that, let's just quit. And I got up, told, I actually told you that I was going to work. We drove up to Waterford. He's for lucky the day. I just don't remember that now, that's yeah. all. I'd always get a clatter when I was sitting down next to him. <laughs> we drove up to Waterford today. We had a big huge smoke going up, my legs out the window. Um, Jesus, Robert, I don't remember any of that. Yeah, because you didn't know. Yeah. I spent 80 euro on my Just last well. paycheck on you know, the carnival, you win tickets. Yeah. I got three key rings and like three laddie pops. And where do my wages come in then? Your wages are always there, plenty, yeah. you know that. <laughs> <laughs> then there was another, oh my God, in Flyfit, one morning. So basically how Flyfit works is you a manager would go in, open up the gym for half five and then you're on your own until six with a PT. Then a PT would come in. So I went in one morning, opened the gym, went up to the office, was doing the morning bits, but I wasn't, like, normally no one's coming in at that time anyway. Like, it's like a system. You operate by yourself. You swipe long before COVID. You swipe your card, you enter in, and then a PT was only in a half an hour anyway. <laughs> so I was going about my morning bits and I was going down checking off the toilets and he was like, God, that disabled shower is locked thinking nothing of it anyway I thought someone was in it like went up um, doing the, do my bits around the gym and then about two hours later the PT that was on with me was like Rob I'm doing the checks there every hour but the last two times I checked the toilets the disabled shower was locked so I goes I thought the exact same thing this morning because when I, when I went to do the first check uh, it was locked so I went up, you can open it with a screwdriver from the outside, went up, got the screwdriver, came down, the PT was there. Opens it anyway, and by God, I did not expect to see what I saw in there. What was in there? There was actually a woman oh my God. in a sleeping bag God love her. with six different bags around her, bay around her. I was like, oh, you should see me. You actually should have seen me. I actually am pale white. I goes, uh, excuse me. I was like, you're not meant to be sleeping here at all. She just glared at me. She goes, I'm a member of Fly Fit, blah, blah, blah. I'm in here all the time and all this shit. And I was like, yeah, all right. So, and then I was like, look, you're going to have to leave. Like, I was like, you know, you are mm. in a sleeping bag. Yeah. In this is a disabled shower. I was like, what if someone needs to yeah. use it? I goes, you're not permitted to sleep here. Like, yeah. uh, and then she started saying, I have my womanly bits. I have my womanly bits. I'm in here. I'm left being here with my womanly bits. I goes, here, love, you're in a shower. I goes, you're not in a toilet. And then she started screaming, harassment. Harassment! Harassment! Oh, so I was like, not a chance am I dealing with this anyway. So I gave the manager a quick phone call. I was like, you're never going to guess what happened. And eventually, hours later, we had to get her out. She God, God love her. I know you'd feel really. lousy. God love us. But at the end of the day, you can't sleep in the disabled shower and claim you, you have womanly problems. And no. then she's full on lying to Plus me. the fact it was locked, was it? She locked she herself locked in. The yeah, she locked it from oh. the inside. Mm. I was in. I, I'm in the toilet. I, I womanly bits. I was like, you are not in a cubicle mm. at all. He goes, that's a shower. Mm. <laughs> she got taken. And then there was another one where, let's say, oh yeah, up in Costa and this thundering cow <laughs> came up to me. Joe, I, I used to love coffee. I used to love making it. So I knew all the temperatures. She was, a girl came up to me. Nah, nah. Way too hot ever in my life. Did I ever get a coffee like that? I goes, what you mean? Joe, we had thermometers, like, so we know when to stop. I was like, oh, no, like, 120. Joe, you know, that's what it's meant to be. Or 140 or whatever it was. I goes, that's what it's meant to be. Not a chance. No way. Worst coffee I ever got in my life. Take that back and make me a new one. And by the way, it was low-fat milk as well, I said. Just in case you didn't remember. So I goes, I goes, that stupid bitch. You now I goes, watch this. <laughs> Grabbed, I go, not a bother, I'll sort that out there for you. I'll give you a shout when it's ready. Went in, poured out the full fat milk. I goes, this cow now is getting full fat milk and I hope she puts on tree stone for me. Steamed it up. Then I felt bad <laughs> and poured it out. <laughs> and put back in the low fat milk and she came up to me. She goes, thanks, that's better. I goes, have a nice day. <laughs> what is that nice you could have done like? I know, but like I actually, thinking back on it, I wish I gave her the full fat milk. I know, yeah. Because she was actually 
an absolute mm. thundering see you it next Tuesday. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Less of the language show, thank you. I know me and Jake are actually working on pulling back from the language because it, it's not that appealing really, is it's it? It's nicer anyway. Yeah, my mum's killing us really. <laughs> That's the truth, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then when, this is actually going off topic about work, but um, before me, Tristan and one of his ex-girlfriends were in leisure plex lashing rain and one day and there's this deal or no deal machine in it uh, and it's the real deal or no deal you know like it messes around the bo- boxes and then yeah. you win money like yeah found the euro remember the christmas you got us all the iphone 5 yeah. it's all the same one yeah so that had slow motion camera and um, found the euro put in a euro and we were like oh my god you know we saw how the game operates basically it's deal or no deal you pick the lowest boxes you win the highest numbers so we put in the euro lost the game and i was like here trist like you know look mm. at those boxes moving around there yeah. so if we use because we all got the phone then because we're all the first cousins so we all got the same thing so we all had the phone i was it's like their dad won a bet <laughs> oh my god <laughs> <laughs> you got one phone ride get out to get four <laughs> yeah literally um but so i was like look at the boxes going around we can use the slow-mo cam to see if it works and we can pick the boxes went in the next day about five of us and it fucking worked and effing worked yeah watch language now please <laughs> we fleeced a thousand euro from leisureplex mm, a thousand euro when was that would you imagine that and then your mum was like um <sighs> God, it's probably bad to say but your mum was like how sorry no how in god's name are you doing it never in my and since this machine is here this has never been happening and ryan o'sullivan we were like he's a bit slow there and he's able to calculate the numbers in his head <laughs> is that the truth no oh, for God's sake. <laughs> How were you getting it? Are you slow? We were looking at the slow motion cam. We were looking at the boxes. We oh were able to pick God. out the boxes because we recorded the boxes moving around and we could see where all the low numbers were going with the slow motion cam. So we were picking off the low numbers first and then what was in the high numbers we got to cash out. How oh come everyone else wouldn't see that? I don't know. We just thought of it. We just thought of it. Well. And then they were like, I'm so sorry, but we don't have that much money in the till anymore and we'll give you a free game of bowling though. <laughs> Did you get the money? Yeah, we got a load oh. of money off them oh. and we were actually in school at the time. We went into the casino next door and I won another 500 euro. Joking, if any of it. Come here. That's because I would, yeah. Oh yeah, ma'am. I just fleeced a thousand euro there off the ledger place and then I went into the casino next door and I won 500 euro. So I'd probably made you give it back. Exactly. Yeah. God, what a <laughs> laugh we used to have though. We used to be going into all the casinos in our school uniforms, but we'd have our jacket over them, over us. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. But let's pass the mic to my lovely mother now. She has hilarious stories. What about the time, it was my dad's 50th, ma'am. That's right, yeah. And we got him the best present he always ever wanted. That's right. That's so right. basically, we'll actually tell this one first because yeah, that's the reason. Flying, we, yeah, is it? Yeah. Yeah. So go. So scrap that. We're going to go on to a different story. It's called evacuate the airport. <laughs> oh, I never forget it ever. Go on. I still have nightmares over this. But this is the reason now why she didn't. I, want I'm to not fl- a lover of flying. Yeah. Basically, that's the way it started. But the husband persuaded me to go on a holiday. Because I didn't fly, fly for four years. Anyway, I said, feck this, I said. I need to get away somewhere. So anyway, one day we decided to go away. Went up to um, Shannon Airport. Beautiful, quiet airport. I walked into the airport. I was saying, God, this is heaven. There's no crowds, no anything. Mm. So Michael, the husband, the other half, I'll, I'll say it the other half so you'll understand what I'm talking about. I love going into the airport, looking at the creams and this and that. And he might go up to the bar and have a pint. And yeah. I just taking me dead time getting ready for the flight in the head just to be able to do it in the head of my night I'd say she's paralytic and getting ready to no walk. no I wasn't I wasn't <laughs> so anyway I went up to get the creams and I said to Michael I said I said let you go up and have a pint he said no you're grand I'll walk up with you and anyway I was in around looking at the creams I was saying going, out, going away for a week no children nodding no ma'am no dad <gasps> buy the creams get what I want nice and happy so next anyway, next I heard, what's the alarms that go off in the airport? Like, um, oh my god, a bomb scare kind no, of thing. No, no, it was do 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 do. It was all that. I was, uh, and I was going up to the girl at the till. I said to the girl, "Is this uh, 
what is it? What do what an exercise? A trail. Uh, oh, yeah. an exercise for um, if something's on fire or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go on. Yeah. yeah. So you know, I talk, so no, but anyway, and uh, she goes, no, run. <laughs> I said, Ram, I said, sorry, you... what you said there? She said, no, run. I said, you're fucking joking. Excuse the language, oh, but I have to F her. Yeah, but the, the, way you, the way you passed over that there was very, you won't actually look at her. She goes, no, no. this is not a drill. Run, run. drop run. everything and run. <laughs> so all I can remember is running past the other half. He just looking twice, he knew I was gone. I started running through the <laughs> airport. I was never in Shannon Airport in my life. I didn't know where the doors were. I was screaming, where's the fucking doors? People... Where's the effing doors? There was builders dropping their hats, going back from running. Yeah, because of her. I, I never in my, and believe it or not, now I'd get back up in the plane after this. Oh. So then we went down the stairs, out to the smoking area. By the way, I was off the cigarettes for nine months at this stage. Went down into the smoking area for an hour. Never forget it, the fright. I'll never forget my heart was beating. Oh I'll never my forget God, the fight. So funny, How am I going to get up in the plane? But never mind that. Like, she ran clean past my dad and left him for dead. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> all, I, all I could see was the side of my chin being blown up or something. That's all I could see. <laughs> I don't know how or why, but that's all I could see. I ran past him. He was saying, Christ, if I was in trouble anyway, you were definitely gone. Oh, literally. So we came back up from the airport or from downstairs in the smoking area. I didn't have a cigarette that time, actually. I don't know how I didn't. We went up to the bar and we sat down. He said to the barman, do this happen off? And he said, never. And I just looked at the husband. And I said, how am I going to go on playing here? So, like, that takes us into the next story. Yeah. So, like, for my dad's 58, my that's dad... Right, so my mum and dad didn't know what the um, present was and it was a big huge surprise and I was kind of half saying to Tanya, it was Tanya's idea, she called lover, oh, poor Tanya, like. Yeah, well, it was your dad's dream. <laughs> I was our dad, yeah, we knew it, like. Yeah. Mm. So Tanya got all the, all organised, whatever, and it was a great plan. So we kind of had like a guessing game with Jean. Okay. So they'd open one letter and there's a clue, you're going on a bus, a travel bus, to an apple, the apple's big, the big apple. So it eventually led to New York City. Oh, but we were all that. like, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> and like, I never broke my eyes away from you. Because yeah. I knew my mum would be like, not a fucking chance. No, I told him go himself. There's yeah. no problem. I wasn't going anywhere. <laughs> she God love him. He was actually, like, it was actually lousy. It was lousy. But I couldn't <laughs> help it. Up in the plane for six hours. No you fucking way. Should have seen her face. No. She was like, a big huge smile. And then she started getting the clues. And then her face when I saw, started to go when sour. When I saw New York, I said, well, that's one place anyway that I ain't going. That's for sure. <laughs> we'll never forget it. And I didn't go either. We didn't We didn't go. Oh my God, I know you're actually uh, lousy. Uh, like, uh, uh. And then... Brings me on to when we were younger, ma'am. Remember where we went to be going to Tenerife? Oh, that's right, yeah. Um, myself and the other half were going away on holidays for a week on our own for a break because we had a good couple of kids. And now and again, we used to take a break on our own. So I went in to book the tickets for myself and Michael, the husband. So I brought the kids with me. It was Bridget, Robert and Jake. They were very young at the time. No, before that I was after organising babysitters and everything. So myself and Michael were going away for a week on our own. So next Sunday we didn't book the holiday. So I was booking the holiday. Just on a Thursday, we were actually going away on the Sunday. So the girl that was booking the holiday said, you know, your kids are kind of crying there. Why would you back? <laughs> I says, well, what do you mean? She said, next I turned around the tree and we were saying, we want to go with G. We want to go with G. And I was saying, Christ. So anyway, I rang the husband. Pests. I rang the husband. I said, look, I can't go away for a week. They're, they're roaring and crying. Look, I said, bring them along. Just, just you know, bring them on. So we said we would. Anyway, we're all excited. I turned around and I said, you're all going on holidays with Mammy and Daddy. Oh, my God. And they God. were delighted. This is on a Thursday now. We're actually going out on the Sunday. So I'll never forget because I'd go home. i never forget running to pennies, buying packets of T-shirts Getting and packets of shorts. Like, yeah. Everything was in plastic. I didn't have to iron a wash or anything. They were all very cheap. It's in pennies for the three babies. So it was a quick holiday and it was grand that way. So next, anyway... Sunday morning came lashing rain and sure we were delighted oh my god singing to Kelly we hey saying, ho hey ho we were saying we're going to be in the sun there in the next couple mm. of hours out in the sun my dad out. my dad then like waving all to the workers when he's leaving you know, ha ha yeah, I'm going on right. holidays yeah yeah so we get into the car anyway myself the husband Robert Jake and Bridget and but remember what we were singing to Kelly we're singing oh yeah what were we singing again hey ho hey ho it's, it's off, off to Tenerife, Tenerife we go. go that's right that's right <laughs> So we're in the car and we're driving out, we're leaving the car house out there, lashing rain and out of heaven. The kids were in the back, we're singing. Oh, we were so happy, it was frightening. I know. Anyway, we went up, we parked the car. 
walked into the airport. I'm like, whatever, I looked around the airport. Now the kids were next to me and I was saying, stop running around now, kids. Be good. We're going to love your holiday. Don't spy me. All, all nice and sweet, Julie. All nice and sweet, Julie, at that time, yeah. <laughs> so when I went into the airport, it was very quiet looking. I said, this is brilliant. It's all queuing up for anything to go on the plane. We love a quiet airport. <gasps> Which was brilliant anyway. So I sat down by the fountain, as you all probably know where the airport is. There's a fountain out there. You don't probably all sat down with your kids. So next, whatever, I saw Michael walking back towards me, their dad. Big, long face, Lim. <laughs> I said, what's, what's his problem? He's going on holidays. He should be fine and happy. Mm. Next, door, I said, what's wrong with you? He says, the plane is gone. I says, what? <gasps> what do you mean the plane is gone? He said, the plane, we missed the flight, was yesterday. I says, don't be, don't, you're joking me. So the kids start to kind of run around more. I said, kids, sit down there for two minutes with you <laughs> or something. <laughs> I'd, say, no, I'd say your face was going pink at this stage, was it? Next, anyway, the woman who was looking for us, the, that we were supposed to be flying out, we said, are you the Sullivans? I said, yeah, we're the Sullivans. She said, we're putting your name out yesterday, all yesterday. Your flight was yesterday. <sighs> I said, and our flight was yesterday. We're like langers then saying to everyone, oh my God. So that was grand anyway. The kids started getting clatters here and there because <laughs> they started just crying to me. I said to myself, fuck off you. Because <laughs> I was supposed to be going on our own for a break. I was bringing you along and now there's no holiday there. So next day anyway, oh my God, it was one of the worst days of my life. <laughs> and I will never, ever forget. So we had to walk out the airport. I'll never forget Oh my god, was the it still lashing? It was lashing. Oh. Here I was. How am I going to back, go back to the house? <laughs> the house is like a pig side because I just left it. <laughs> clothes everywhere. That was grand anyway. The kids started getting clatters into the face because they were crying. I was saying, do you mind, anyway, do you mind that? <laughs> Next, their dad said, we're going to have to do something with the kids now because they're very disappointing. I said, you can do what you want, I said, because I ain't just going to the fucking pub for the next two days. <laughs> oh my god, and, like. I'll never forget the depression as long as I live. But yeah, that's what happened and... It was a bad day. Looking back, no, we're skitting off oh, so years, funny. years later. But it Hilarious. was a bad time. I can imagine, though. My yeah. God, I can barely remember it, but yeah. I do remember. Was it the green jeep we were on the way no, into? No, actually, it was the BMW. Oh, was the, oh, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't want to say that. <laughs> <laughs> that was that time, not this time. <laughs> yeah, go on, have that again. Yeah, I know. So, my man basically got like the girl working gave my man the wrong tickets in the. What's it called? The travel place. Well, what was what? What happened? We went in there on a Thursday. What's it called again? The, the travel agency. Yeah. I won't say where it was though. To be fair, so we when we got our tickets, we never opened them because we, we it's two three days later we're going away, so we booked on Thursday. We're flying out on the Sunday. What she was after doing, she gave us tickets for Saturday, which was on the on the leaflet, but we were led to believe it was the Sunday because I always remember it because I had to get off work on the Sunday because I worked on the Sunday but they said it was the Saturday we thought it was the Sunday so we just even up the tickets we went out there it was the day before yeah so you know? and then what about the time when you were in the salon and who came in chat so what was after happening Monday, this was now after yeah but you see that was on a Sunday that this happened Monday morning myself and the husband went into a travel agency about this because Obviously, they were completely wrong. When we were back into travel agency Monday morning, obviously, we were very angry. You get no sort of very upset. Off, huh? We went in. The person who gave us a ticket, they had her hidden inside the office. She would not come out of the office. <laughs> I will never forget it. Now, my husband's very quiet, as a lot of people probably yeah, know. Michael he Sullivan, he's yeah. very quiet. I actually first time ever heard him raise any voice the way he did. But she would not come out of the office. Anyway, we got no satisfaction whatsoever. Yeah. None. So that was the holiday, the money, down the drain, no satisfaction. Anyway, we say... And it was their year, fault. It was their fault. No satisfaction. A year and a half later, I was working in some salon. And now this girl was always on my mind because she knew that it was, it was three children very upset. Mm. And me and their dad, a lot of money that was wasted. And we're a working class family. Like, we yeah. don't have... We didn't have that yeah, money. Like, so you know, we thrown, you know, around the place. It's a, like it was that. a lot of money, We like. actually had to get a loan the following week to go to Turkey to get the kids away because they were so upset. And that's the truth. I remember Turkey we very well. We actually had to borrow money to go away again because we couldn't leave the kids down because they were so upset. But, and to get no satisfaction off the company is She shocking, was like. actually hid inside the office and the other girls... Anyway, they made excuse for it, to mind that. So a year but, and a half... what my dad said, yeah. like, they were like... My dad was like, what do you mean she's not here? She's literally looking at me behind that door. I can see her. That's right. <laughs> she was actually hiding inside the yeah. office. We were looking at her. It's not like you were going to bait her. Yeah, exactly. 
Well, we might have if we <laughs> had Angela. <laughs> we might have. Oh my so God. anyway, a year and a half later, I was working in salad. I won't say where. Anyway, that girl was on my mind for a long time because she knew the, the damage that she'd have to do. And she didn't, she didn't even have the decency say to sorry. face us yeah, and say, say sorry. Apologize. Because when someone says sorry, you'd forget about yeah. it. Like. Well, you wouldn't forget about you it, know but it might I make mean, it easier. Though. Yeah. It might make it easier. So a year and a half later, who walks in to get their hair done? This lady that was hiding in the office <laughs> that destroyed our holiday. So I said to one of the girls, is that girl for somebody? They said, no. I said, I'll take her. I said. So anyway, I was in the back and I was just, now I'm, I like to do hair, don't get me wrong. And I love doing hair and I lo- love transforming people and making beautiful and everything else. Like, But this lady, I actually wasn't going to make her beautiful. Oh my God. One single bit. I said, this is payback time now. <laughs> so anyway, she sat down. She didn't have a clue who I was because I tell you the reason why. Obviously, when you're working, now this is nearly 20 years ago, remember this. Obviously, when you're working, you're dressed up to the 90s. Dressed up to the hair, nines. The nines. <laughs> or the 90s, wherever you may be. When you're hairdressing. <laughs> but with the day I went in to book the, the, book the, uh, the tickets, I was in a tracksuit with no makeup on and a ponytail in the hair and I wasn't looking fantastic by no means. The tree, right? tree crying kids swinging so, off. Yeah. So I wouldn't be one for getting up in the, done up in the daytime. So anyway... She hadn't a clue who I was because I was all dressed up and yeah, work. Yeah, 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 of course. So she sat down anyway and turned. I said, what can I do for you today? She said, I'd really like a very, very rich red. I said, oh, yeah. Well, I said, you know, now sometimes reds don't really come out the way they should be, but we'll do what we You're can. You're actually planting seeds. Do you know? <laughs> well, I knew what I was going to do. Look, I shouldn't have done it. No, we all know that. But like, I had to get her back one way or the other. I was years ago, was it? Yeah, it was 20 years ago. And anyway, she was a beautiful orange going out. She didn't, the red didn't go near to her because sometimes <laughs> sometimes the pigmentation don't take so we made her a lovely orange and you know what I can give her no satisfaction either because like she gave me no satisfaction but didn't you tell her can you not remember me you said I did yeah I said to her I said do you not remember me she looked at me she goes no oh, I said the girl that you remember the three children that were roaring and crying she just got me she ran out of the salon oh my god speaking so of that, yeah. my man yeah. being a hairdresser what about the time you were 16 and you were just starting out oh my god and I the girl... won't say where it was but <laughs> I was in. I was sixteen years of age, and I was working in this premises that they were quite snobby, do you know. And when they were stylists that time, I'm going back again now, another twenty odd years ago. When they were stylists, like Mom, they thought were they were twenty gods. odd years ago. You were sixteen. Well, well, yeah. Was it twenty well, odd right, years right. ago? I don't want to give me, 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 me age away that much, you know, Robert. <laughs> do you know. Don't push it out, like. But that's, you were saying, you just said two seconds ago that that story was 20 years ago. I know you're saying this one's 20 oh, years right, ago then. All right, she's so, figure that out themselves. Yeah. they figure that out. So anyway, I was working in this, Julie in this girl. premises. I don't want to give the name of the press because I'm Yeah, like, go on. So there was a couple of stylists there. I was only a little washer and runner. I used to go out to get their messages and this, that. Sure, and yeah, I, you're starting out, like. I loved getting their messages because it was a break for me and I was going to have a fag. I was like myself getting out of the salon. You were smoking at 16. Well, I kind of started I'm anyway. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> sure, I've kind of smoked that time. So anyway, this girl said to me one day, um, sorry, could you go out there and get me two or three potatoes? And I said, would you get a packet? Because I can't ask for two or three potatoes. <laughs> so I was kind of embarrassed. Like, she was asked me to go shopping. Anyway, I went down. Anyway, I was delighted. So I went down shopping. It was a half an hour. So anyway, when I came back into the salon, this other stylist, now where I was working at the time, it was a very long corridor. So... It would have been about 30 feet long. Yeah. So there would have been a load of people sitting down at each side. So anywhere you're walking, people could see and people could hear you. So it was in front of everyone. It was so. in front of everybody, yeah. yeah. So at the top of the salon where I was working, this this stylist said to me, she said, um, shouted from the top of the salon down to the end, she said, Julie Crowley. And she pointed her finger at me and Right, and I kind of looked around. I would, I turned my head. Worst mistake that I woman said, ever made. No, I turned my head, and I said, "She talking. To, she's not talking to me at all, because she wouldn't be talking to me like that at all. Because my mother and father wouldn't talk to me like that. Never mind. Her. In front of everyone. In front of a lot of people now. Next time she had her finger point, she pointed her finger, and she pointed her finger like and curled it. As curled her. Come, her. come up here, you. Come up here, you. So I, I turned around and I looked back, and she said, "Yeah, you, you." So I said, "Great, yeah." So I walked up to her anyway. And she had her finger still pointing to my face. And she said, where were you for the last half an hour? So 
she still had her, her finger pointing to my face. So unfortunately, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not prone to say this now. And I'm ne- And if anyone, look, I don't want anyone will listen and I couldn't tell you that. Oh, God. But is that a good thing I done? Yeah. But I will tell you, I actually bit her finger <laughs> off. And I said to her, off. well, she got a good bite. You right? bite her off I though. said to her, Oh my God. How you... dare you point your finger at me? I said, my mother and father wouldn't treat me like that. I said, who do you think you are? So the manager, which I was very great with at the time. Oh my God. We were very great. He said, Julie, I have to fire you. <laughs> he said, I can't. You can't get you on this one. I said, there's no problem. But I said, just tell you want to get her own messes in future. And another thing I said, listen, you can't speak to people like that. And I was very, very young at the time, but they just thought that they were gods that time. But like, I mean, people can't be just speaking to whoever they want like that at all. No, that was only one thing that happened. I had a lot of happy memories when I was training, like, but that was just one of those things like, don't anyone try it like? Oh, ma'am, so. speaking of my mum going through her training, let's just say, what about the time you decided to do your one's hair? Who's that now? Um, About... Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was very young. What age were you then? Oh, this, this wasn't when I was training. This was... This was a long time ago. I say I was about 12. Okay. I was mad. I was. A, I used to love hairdressing. I used to be always playing with people's hair and can I do your hair and this. And there was a girl living next door to me. She said to me one day, she said, Is there any, will you play with my hair? I said, come on, we go in. We were playing, we were playing outside her front in, in our house actually. Yeah. And we were upstairs into her bathroom. We were looking for hairspray and all this in our mum's uh, bathroom. Her hair now was very thin and right. very light. <laughs> to be fair God, so ma'am. I was playing away with it anyway and I was doing this that, and I was putting a bit of lipstick on and we were playing hairdressing playing this anyway children like so next children yeah so next anyway I sprayed this stuff on her hair Most now I couldn't really read much because I was very young but all I saw was kind of IMAC remover <laughs> but if you see me running out of that house so Te- quick but sure what happened what happened no, you just, sprayed on top of her head and I what I sprayed I thought it was hairspray but is it, was it hair remover hair remover there was a hair remover but you could spray it as well yeah and you hear our man banging down the door next but never mind that patch. there was actually a ball patch in the back, back big of ball head. patch that was a bad experience though alright that was oh yeah, yeah. but it was very funny now as well because we were children we laughed or we laughed you know yeah, you, you were laughing yeah, she, I, wasn't. Oh, she wasn't she wasn't laughing <laughs> speaking of sure. bad experiences my mm. mum loves to torture my dad <laughs> love him I love frightening the shit out of him like frightening the shit out of him mm. um, what did you do to him when you are shopping oh for god's sake I don't I don't even want to hear this at all <laughs> so. well what I love doing to him is that you, if any of you are listening to us now any wives or husbands or anything like that like I'd love to even do that to a boyfriend I think yeah I love it I like always when I go shopping I'd say to I'd say I'd say to like Mike every other no every other ma'am, you start there and you start uploading the shopping up onto the conveyor belt and it'd be five minutes, but they're never five minutes. Yeah, but he'd say getting much. I say no, nah, just bring a small bag. But by the time I finish, it's, it's a whole trolley full the usual. And he always says, "Have you enough money in you?" Well, I said, "I'm not going to get it if I have enough money in me." Of course, I have enough money in me, but the sweat is always pouring off. Him. But it's not even that at all. It's but well, remember when you were like two minutes there to run out to the car. They were out in Tesco's, so yeah. I did some purpose. So I just was a, f- a fair giddy day. Went out, we got a load of messages out in Tesco's, so the trolley was full. So I said to him, Look at you, queue up there, because I have to go to the car to get something, right? So I went out to the car and all. I stood in Tesco's at the corner. I watched him going up as far as the till, the sweat. <laughs> he'd, no money, he'd no money on him now this time. He was waiting for me to come back with the money, right? And he couldn't walk away and leave the messages. But my dad, if you knew my dad, yeah. my dad now that is like panic mode for him. The sweat was pouring <laughs> out. He was taking the messages out, looking north, east, west. I waited until the very last message was gone through the till. He definitely would only shit in his pants, I'd say, to fight with oh this thing. Oh my but God. But I just walked up to him. I was in convulsions. I couldn't. <laughs> Stop laughing. But that's only one of the things that I'd... Mind you, he's white to me now at this stage. Yeah, mm. literally. Mm. So we're going to get a bit serious here now. How did you feel when you found out your first son was gay, Jake? Well, you see, you never told me. Now you're going to be talking about this one. Yeah, see, it's natural. <laughs> I want to put you on the spot, like. Well, how did I feel about Jake being gay? Um, It's very hard to put into words, really, because... Just for all the mams out there, if they did have a gay oh, child... Oh, well, I will, I will tell the very truth. Yeah. I will tell Do, the truth. And be open and honest, no, because we I, all I'm have to say, accustom to it. No, I, it was... Look, it's very hard to put your, your feelings into words like this, because obviously it's a very personal thing between you and your child and everything else. And there's one thing I will say. Gay, not gay, straight, 
boy, whatever they are, whatever they are, once your child's brain is happy, at night going to sleep while well, your child is okay, mm. I don't care, I don't care. No, it was a big fright to me, I'm not going to lie. I got it, it was a fright. What? what? How did I know? How, how come I didn't know? How come I didn't see these things? Obviously, other people seen things. I but didn't like even, know, like. like even growing up in our house, before we were out, it was taboo. Yeah, we're, we're very old fashioned. We, oh, I suppose it was taboo because we're educated about but it. But that's what it was. And how closer did us coming up bring Well, you see, us? you see, I, I've been very educated though, because my two sons mm. are gay. So I'm after getting educated by, by looking at them, living with them, seeing them. I don't care what they are once they're happy. Yeah. That's all I can say because and what went they were very, very... It's only when I look back now, I do realise how unhappy Robert and Jake was because this is why they were coming in from school and this is why they got up to bed straight away and I was saying, why aren't you coming downstairs? Why are you going to bed? But like even, You're sleeping an awful lot. Even and before as well, when all the lads went to Amsterdam, it's like, oh my God, it's like I didn't want to go because the red light district was over there and I didn't want questions. I mean, like, why isn't he going over? Do you know what I mean? You know I didn't even cop on to be honest with you. Like, I didn't know. Mm. To be fair, like, it was a very, very... Now, it was a very, very big surprise. I can't even tell you about the surprise it was with Robert <laughs> because... <laughs> Like Robert used to come home for weekends and I was saying, Jesus, like, I hope he's not making food on any girls or anything like that. <laughs> so I, just, I don't know what was going on. But like, I will say one thing. Look, anyone out there who is listening to this, if you think your sons are gay, I beg if you go up and say it to them because that's all it takes. Only two words because I tell you why. You just don't understand how your much it helps. Ch- yeah, how much it helps because my two sons are so happy now. Mm, we are. I can see the difference now because I realise... Like going back a couple of years ago, they were going to bed very early, coming from school. They weren't. I was saying what? depression. It was depression. I didn't know it. No, they don't even go to bed because they're so happy. Yeah. And if anyone is listening to this, and, and me and Jake, mm-hmm. sure, me and Jake used to be very bad towards each other. Well, not bad, it was like brothers. Like, you yeah, know, well, me yeah. and Jake used to have no time for each other. Yeah, but you see, Jake didn't know Robert, and Robert didn't know Jake, and then Jake knew Robert was, and then Robert knew Jake, and there's no one said anything. Yeah. No, and he found all this out the last couple of months because. We're doing enough that talking about it because it needs to be spoke about. Because I well I want Robert and Jake happy. Yeah. You know? I, I just want him happy and it's not a thing to be ashamed of by no means. No, don't get me wrong. I did love in daughter in laws. Mm, yeah, yeah. I said that to Robert the other day. Look, I said, Robert, I did love the daughter, but I don't care. Mm. I don't care. Robert is happy, Jake is happy. That's all I want for the two of but them. But see, that's what I appreciate from you as well. I want the honesty. I want to know how you're feeling towards the situation. Do you know what I mean? Well, you I have like... to be honest, especially if you're a mother. Mm. And if you want your child happy, like, see, that, like, there's a lot of denial out there, I think. Yeah. And there's a lot of scared, people are scared to say it. I'm after hearing an awful lot of things since Robert and Jake came up with this iPad. A lot of kids that they think they're gay. And iPad. They, yeah. iPad, sorry. Podcast. Podcast. <laughs> whatever you call it. God love her. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Look, look, listen, if anyone is listening to it and you think your kid is gay, but yeah, but I you... beg if you go up to him and talk to him because it might save an awful, awful lot of sleepless Unhappiness. nights and a happiness to them. Because you know? when you're in the closet and you think it's the be all, be all and end all, you think that... Do you know, it's the biggest secret you ever had in your life. You didn't want, like, do you know what I mean? And for someone, like, a mother to approach you, to to actually be like, everything's okay. Do you know, you're going to be happy. I'm here for you is a very, very Well, I think any mother, saver. like, well, I can't speak for all mothers. But I, I think, well, I suppose I will speak for all mothers because every mother loves their kids. That goes without saying. Especially, like, I don't know. It's just look. It's a hard one because you're, you're speak, you're speaking from within yourself. I can't explain about what, the way I feel about my boys, and my girls. With that, obviously, that goes without saying. I am your favorite, though. You're not my favorite. <laughs> oh, I, I haven't got a favorite. I love every single one of you the same. I'm telling you all that. Yeah, you, your actions tell love. We yeah. all know you don't love be me the silly. most. No, I don't. I love every one of them the same. But no, really, like if anyone is listening to this and they think they're gay and they're afraid to come out, don't be afraid. Because you know what? You have to make you happy and nobody else. Yeah. And once you make you happy first, you'll make everyone else around you happy then. Mm, yeah, you exactly. Know? That's what I... Now, listen, it was taboo when Robert... Not one, I had two sons. <laughs> I know, double bogey. Yeah, like, not one, I have two sons. I have two, two, two what, sons. Like, and it's just and weird. Because especially from the, the mother's perspective. You know, like, we told her, Comrade Story, you know how we felt. It's like... 
everyone around you when you come out goes through their own emotions. Do you know what were you like when I was in? What were you like when I was on the holiday? And Tanya said it to you. Well, you see, I found out when I found out about Jake first. I actually couldn't speak for a week, but the only reason I couldn't speak is that I was devastated at what Jake went through. Yeah, that's the reason I'm saying. How did I not notice my own son? God almighty, what does he have to go through? Like the difference between me and Jake was, Jake coming out gay was a start off point, with me coming out gay was the next step, because I already had a foundation, I was in my course, you know, Jake was very sad in himself. Very I was sad. always confident in a way. Very you know, sad. I was always outgoing. And plus the Jake, fact Jake was younger than Robert. My heart goes out to Jake, you know? so thinking back on it, I feel so bad for him. Sure, he'd probably kill me now for saying this, but I won't, I, I, I'll say it, like, like, I, that's what I was devastated. I couldn't speak for a week. His dad couldn't, couldn't speak for a week because we were just, we, we were killed ourselves that we didn't realise this and God love us, what did they go through? We got, we, we sorted Jake out. We, anyway, blah, blah, blah. Then we were getting hints about Robert. Tanya. 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 <laughs> the door was trying to make it out nice because I know they Robert's clothes very tight. <laughs> yeah. Because they were, like they were saying, Mom, what do you think over Jake? Now I said, I, Jake is grand, but Jake is happy, I don't care. But they're only building me up for Robert. <laughs> they're building me up for Robert. Like, God, God love me. I'd, God love me and their dad. We didn't know it was out in front of us. But I was told about Robert one day. And again, I saw Robert going to bed. And I was saying to myself, nah, nah, he couldn't be. Mm. He couldn't be. And then I was told one day and Robert was up in bed. I went upstairs to him and he was on his phone or something. I said to Robert, Robert. You went up to him. No, it was when I just came back from the stag. I was rattled. Yeah. Absolutely rattled. And he comes up to me and he goes, do you have something up, to say to me? I went up the stairs to him and he was lying in the bed. And I said, Robert, I was only told that morning now. No, I was done no, you at were, this. You were told a couple of days before him because Tanya gave you time to sit with it. Do you know what I mean? Well, it wasn't much anyway. Yeah, it wasn't like, much. Look, but, I yeah. was stunned about Robert. Yeah. And I just said to Robert, Robert, you have something to tell me about? He said, I have, Mamma. Yeah. I said, why didn't you tell me all along, Robert? Because he was saying, Mam, over Jake. Over. I said, Jake, I said, Robert, you're your person. Jake is his person. Exactly. I said, I never, ever want you to go through any, like the, anything like that again in their own. And look, so far, so good. They're very happy now. I've seen a, an unbelievable improvement in them. And, and I don't care. But even with like, us, friendship-wise, like me and Jake are inseparable. Yeah, but you see, you're growing up now as well and you're going into yeah. men. When you're younger, obviously, you were... What about what you said? stupid fights and all that business. And what about what you said to me um, after you said, all that? What do you mean? So you came up to me and goes, what do you have to say? And then you like, don't even have to say it. I'll go down and get your dad. But oh, yeah. do you like girls as well? Yeah. <laughs> I said, are you sure? Are you sure? No, I'll give you another one. If I'm driving Jake to work every day, right? I drive Jake <laughs> up to work every day, half as far. And I might see this one passing. And I said, yeah, look over, look over to the car. He said, ma'am. <laughs> uh-huh. I'm, I'm gay, like. I said, are you sure? Ma'am. Yeah, pretty, Jake is only laughing. I know, I know. Jake is funny. only laughing. And another day, I was passing a couple of fellas there, and I was, it was a handsome face. I said, you're watching? He goes, no. Yeah. <laughs> so look, we had a laugh, and we had a crack, and I never thought I'd come to this part because I was one old-fashioned bitch. Yeah. But you know what? I wasn't really. I was just puck ignorant, and I but just see, didn't realise. That's what I think as well. It's like, it's very it's easy... Awesome. It's very easy to talk about a situation until it lands at your own doorstep. Well, you have to isn't go it? through the motions, I think. Yeah. And it's, if it's a child or your body, like it's like there, it's you going through it. But as I said, out there, if anyone is listening to this and they are gay and they're ashamed to go out, get out there, just be happy. That's all I can say to you. It'll yeah. save a lot of aggro and a lot of sleepless nights. For sure, because like at the end of the day, like. If you're in the closet, it's you that's going to have to live your life. Your mum and dad are not going to be around for your whole life. No. Your siblings are not going to be around you for the whole life. You have to make your own decisions for you to progress positively in your own life. But what way did you feel then, Robert, when you get when you got that off your chest? Like Now, Jay came out first. So we didn't know about Robert for a while. So obviously, Robert kept all that to himself. So like with me, like you know, again, I'm very out there kind of person I'm talking about do anything so the only people who I ever in my whole life cared about knowing who I was gay was my mum and dad the only people that I didn't give a, a flying excuse my language feck feck say feck <laughs> say feck it sounds nicer I didn't give a flying feck about anyone else it was just my mum and dad because do you know obviously every child cares about what their parents think and the minute I told you 
I downloaded Tinder like five minutes later. You're a tramp. <laughs> He's a tramp. That's what he is. Yeah. Or a whole bad. Like, oh my god. Then. And Patrick. So obviously, like. Hi, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> like what? How he taught my mum. There's a couple of years between me and Patrick. Like so. Again, I'm very confident, and I'd say it. So I say how it is. Like I go, mum, I've a date. She goes what like I have a date and she goes oh god really let me sit down there so you know like but she was like I'm delighted for you I'm delighted for you I was like yeah he's 13 years older than me though <laughs> doesn't matter if he's 13 years older but 13 years older I know but at the start you're well like, it is like yeah, really you're like Jesus yeah. Christ yeah. but sure you loved Patrick you Patrick's, still do love Patrick yeah, yeah Patrick is lovely he's lovely mm, I, yeah same I am um, me and Patrick will stay friends forever good that's Definitely. good so at that this concludes our episode yeah hopefully you enjoyed my mum's company as much as I did Jake will be back next week um, and we will be happy to chat about more shit oh and we got with a no language yeah sorry we ha- we'd be happy to chat poo yeah. <laughs> yeah so we actually got a camera so we want to Set up a YouTube account, you know, get YouTube proper going instead of just having a podcast. You're going to be able to see us, which is really, really exciting. Well, I certainly won't be on that one anyway. Oh, bitch, you will. No, 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 no. no you no, will. No, I won't. No, I won't. <laughs> Everyone needs to show their love for Julie and we need to make her get on the visual podcast. First and last time, no, lads. <laughs> and that's what it's like, vodka. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, she got over, she was shitting it. <laughs> so, at that, we leave and love ye. Sloan Gafol, more here. God bless. Take care, everybody, and everyone be happy. Yeah, I love it.